Um, I'm excited about this part of the conversation, or the part of the evening, rather, and it's the conversation that we're going to have with people that I deeply, deeply admire and respect, people that are consistent. And so first, I want to bring up Essence Atkins. She's an actress, storyteller, a producer. She's best known for her roles on Smart Guy, Half and Half, Are We There Yet, Marlon, Deliver Us From Eva, Dance Flick, Hana House, Hana House 2. Can we give it up one more time for, for Essence Atkins? And she just loves Jesus. <laughs> For real, for real, for, for real, real, for real. For real, for real, And so we're so honored to have you. And it's not just her. I'm also excited to bring up my friend. We were just reminiscing over time that we spent together over 10 years ago. Um, Christopher Erskine. One of my favorite movies of all time was Johnson Family Vacation. I can almost quote it out right now. Writer, director, most recently written for Kingdom Business, been in this game for a long time, highly acclaimed, highly sought after, and a man of God. I love him with all of my heart. So glad to hear one more time for Christopher Erskine. And then you know our friend and our brother Devon Franklin, he needs no introduction. He's a part of this community, been blessing this community for over a decade. TV film producer, New York Times best-selling author, preacher, television personality, and so much more, and on and on. If I just keep reading, it makes them uncomfortable. But, but I brought them up. I said, I want to have a conversation with people who get it, who understand it. And I want to tell you tonight, I want tonight to be about really inspiration. Inspiration, hope, generosity, that's already started. And for those of you who are in need, they put the website up there. Let us know. We have a process that we go through. But we, we are giving. We're helping people. These are some of the most inspiring people that I know. And not in being inspirational for the sake of being inspirational. But, but they have a revelation of who God is. They have a track record with God. A history with God. They've all been in the business for a long time. And they have a unique perspective and a unique contribution to this conversation. And so I just wanted us to talk a little bit. We're going to talk about some stuff. And uh, raise, just by a show of hands, if you are in the entertainment industry, I just want by a show of hands. Wow, that's a good, good, good number of you. Well, you're in the right place. And there's a deposit that I believe they're going to make. And at the end, we're going to pray for it. It's going to be wonderful. But we're just going to talk. We're just going to talk. And... And we did a little bit of talking. Thank you so much for playing the soft music. Got me feeling all good. Make me want to give some more money. <laughs> That's giving money. <laughs> That's giving music. Um, but I, I would love to. So we've got the news of the strike. We've got um, the way that the strike is portrayed. Um, in the news and I'm not I mean that's legitimate on its level. We've got the images of people striking. It seems really, you know, almost kind of fun and, and you know, it, it looks like activism and all that's wonderful and great and, and we support anyone standing up for what they believe in. Um, but I wanna know what it's, what it's really like on the ground based on your observations, based on conversations that you've had with people. The reason why we started this is because, you know, I understand business, I'm a business person. Sarah and I have over 13, we have 13 companies, most of them profitable between the two of us uh, and, and looking to start more if they're gonna be profitable. So I understand business, we negotiate, um, you know, we, we leverage things, we pull back. That, that's a part of business and it is the entertainment business right I, I understand that uh, and so I'm not here to take sides or anything like that, that that's not my spirit it, it is literally business but the reality of it is I, I saw casualties so this business is happening at this level and that is business but then at the ground level I don't believe that it is as fluffy and colorful and fun and festive as it might appear if we just look at the images on the strikes. In your estimation, what's happening at the ground level? 
Well, it's devastating. Um, and it's affecting people outside of just entertainment. So um, I'm divorced and my ex-husband has a martial arts school. And in May, now he has nothing to do with the entertainment industry, but in May when the writer's strike began, he saw 60 people put their memberships on hold. In May, we are over 100 days for the writer's strike and we are over 28 for actors at this point, or tomorrow's 28. So it's having an effect, as you mentioned earlier, on the environment, particularly Los Angeles. Like there are so many streams of revenue that are connected to the entertainment industry. What I have been doing to understand the impact, besides the personal phone calls that I've gotten, right? personal phone calls. I have a dear friend of mine who's a makeup artist and she works not primarily on set, she works primarily in publicists. So with the actors not doing any publicity for any projects, suddenly her income has come to a screeching halt. And she called me when the actors went on strike and she said, I may have to move in with my grandmother. This is a grown, grown woman who was making a very good living working for A-list talent doing their makeup. And now she's like, Err. So the casualties are vast and they are more than is being counted. And what I have been doing also to kind of stay abreast is, you know, you see the articles and you see the rhetoric back and forth and this person says this and the leak happened here and all of this stuff. But if you read the comments, beneath the articles, you will hear from people who are on neither side, not the I am AT, uh, MTP and not the actors or the AFTRA. These are people connected to the business that are like, can you just talk? Because I'm two months behind in my mortgage. I work in production, you know, and so there is a lot of people, there are a lot of people who are being affected by this. And so the need is great, but also the calling for us is great. Wow. The impetus for us is great because it's not just people feeling desperate in terms of finances, it's people feeling desperate in terms of hope. Yes. You know, and so. And you were right, 2008 was the last writer strike and it was 100 days, so we have gone past that. And the, you know, there's a whole lot of obstinance. So from my estimation, we need to pray against the spirits because it's not an individual thing. We don't battle flesh and blood, but principalities. So we have to pray against the spirits of pride we have to pray against the spirits of greed. We have to pray against the spirit of offense and divisiveness because those are the tools of the enemy. And that's who we're fighting. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. I mean, let's just take it right there. Wow. Spiritual. It's spiritual. That's powerful. We're going to come back to that. For me, I mean, I've been out on the front line, so I'm, I'm in the Writers Guild and the Directors Guild. And I've been on the strike line at least once or twice a week at the various studios. And the thing that I'm getting from all the different union members is there's a lack of hope. You know, people are feeling, hey, there was the strike in 07, 08, and then before that there was the big one in the 80s, and then before that, 1960, where I don't know if people know the history of it, but in 1960, our former president, Ronald Reagan, was actually the president of the Screen Actors Guild. And before 1960, actors, writers, directors never got residuals. There was no such thing as royalties. So no matter how big your project was, no matter how much money it made, that next one, you only got your regular salary. So Ronald Reagan and everyone fought to get us residuals. And then there was another fight in 1980, which was over a new technology called the VCR, wow. where you were reselling the movie that was in the theater on television, and it was being sold direct to the consumer. And the unions were like, well, 
if you're going to resell this a second time, right. shouldn't I get a cut? Of that profit. And so today, obviously, the big fight, one of the big fights is obviously over streaming revenue because it's a new technology. And the, the lack of hope that I'm seeing from different people is, hey, why do we have to fight each time? If you figured a way to make more money, wow. shouldn't we get a cut? Because aren't we in this together? Yeah. You know, we are partners. We're the creatives. We don't possess the hundreds of millions of dollars in discretionary fund to make the projects. And you guys do not don't write direct producer act. the creative talent. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the two of us have to work together. It's like the bank and the artist. And I think what I'm hearing from people is if we... Every three years, if we could just both remember we have to work together, mm -hmm. then perhaps we could avoid some of this, the issues that, that, you know, come up. And for me, when, you know, I see these moments where, you know, there's plenty and then things go down, the thing that I always sit there and think about is you, for me being a filmmaker, you have your faith, filmmaking, and your future. Mm -hmm. And you have to make a decision which direction are you going to lean into? Say mm. it is your future. Say that's what's most important to you. Lifestyle, where you're gonna live, the car you're gonna have, all that stuff. That means that you then have to make films, or for those who are musicians, music to support that. No matter what type of music, no matter what type of films, because you're beholden to that future. Wow. And whatever space is left is where your faith goes. <laughs> However, if you decide you're going to start the opposite direction, then your faith dictates your filmmaking or your art, and then you let your... And, and then you let the author and finisher of your faith worry about your future. So, for me, that's what I lean into, letting the author and finish of my faith worry about my future because my agent, my manager, my good buddy who's my producer on some projects, none of them could wake me up. None of them could get me from point A to point Z safely, but the author and finish of my faith can wake me up and provide. And for whatever reason, he keeps providing and keeps waking me up, so I keep leaning into the fact that if he's done it before, he'll do it again. Hallelujah. Mm. I told y'all. Mm, mm, mm. What, what do you want me to say after that? <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what left can be said? Right. Lord have mercy. Shoot. Uh, I don't know. I mean, let me try to think of something, something deep to say. <laughs> I mean, here's what I would, here's what I would say. You know, I think it's very, um, you know, beyond all the specifics, they've covered that. Uh, I think the challenge and the opportunity is that there's so much rhetoric around the strike that you could be squandering this moment of preparation. Because you're so focused on when's the strike gonna be over, when's the strike gonna be over. But we're in a business, like Christopher mentioned, you know, and I'm talking to, you know, agents at the highest levels and people in this business who usually have an understanding of how this is all going to be resolved. Mm -hmm. And even they are like, we don't know. Yeah. Throwing up our hands where this is, we've never seen it like this. So what happens is everybody starts to focus on, okay, well, when is this all going to be over? And then what happens is one, this business, even more so is survival of the fittest. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And, and so I think it's, you know, and again, like I'm gonna come very real, right? Like you, we come in here and it's very easy to be like, oh yeah, God is great and God is great. But are you working on the gift that he gave you? Mm. Are you cultivating the excellence in a time like this where everybody's distracted? Yeah. Are you working on what he called you to, to work on? Mm. Are you learning how to write better scripts? Are you, are you taking acting workshops? You can even do acting on YouTube. Like, are you taking classes to become a better actor? Are you watching master classes of Spielberg to learn how to become a better filmmaker? What are you doing during this period of time? While everybody is focused on when's it gonna be over, then once it's over, those that have been preparing yes. are gonna get, it, they're gonna be at the front of the line. 
So, you know, I, I just, I want, I want it there to be a reality here. Yeah. And where, you know, I've been in this business since I was 18 years old. I started as an intern uh, working for uh, a management company that managed Will Smith and Jada and Babyface and, you know, so many talent at the, at Hot Town at the time. And what I can tell you is in my experience, as people of faith, we don't make excellence mm. a part of our commitment in this business. Wow. We say, well, God is going to take care of the difference and God's going to do it. Yeah, God's going to do it. But faith without works is dead. Yes. We love the faith part, but we don't talk about the works part. Mm -hmm. And we have to, as, as, as believers and members of the kingdom, mm -hmm. step up in our excellence. Yes. Step up in our preparation. Step up in learning this business. Mm -hmm. And this is where my heart goes because... When this thing is over, there are going to be fewer movies made, yeah. fewer television shows yeah. made, fewer opportunities. Now, that could scare somebody, mm -hmm. but it's not meant to be scary. Yeah. It's meant to say, if you are excellent, if I am excellent, then I believe somehow, some way, my excellence yes. combined with God's power yes. will make a way. Yes. Yes. Will make a way. Yes. Because if we're called to this business... Yes then I believe we can survive in this business, but you gotta know what time it is. This is, I'm telling you, I've been in this for 27 years, and this, this is, is the, the most contentious I've ever seen it. So then for me, you know, I'm a producer, I have a deal with CBS, and thankfully I've been able to keep my staff on, and all that's been great. So then I start to think, and I get caught up, like, oh shoot, when's my next movie gonna happen? When's all this gonna happen? Going back to what Christopher said, I said, okay, well I gotta, one, have my faith, and two, what is the work that God is calling me to do while things are not as busy? Yes. Yes. And let me tell you, that has been a struggle because yeah. I'm used to being super busy. Yeah. But the problem is when you're not busy, you then really get a chance to see how far and deep you are in your faith and how not. Because in a moment like this, our faith is get, gets shaken, not only faith in God, faith in us, faith in our ability, Am I as good as I think I am? So in these moments, just letting y'all into my process, I've had to say, wow, God, who, who are you calling me to be? Because if I put so much of my identity in this business and this business goes away, does my identity go with it? And so I have personally had to reevaluate who I am and what I offer to this world that is not dependent on this business. And so that's the work for me during this season where everybody's focused on when it's gonna be over. What are you calling me to do, God? Where are you calling me to go? What are the gifts you're calling me to pay more attention to, to be a better steward of? So that whenever this is over, Lord, I can be aligned with where you want me to go and what you want me to do. Wow, this is so good. This is so, so rich. I'm, um, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I can't help it. I'm like a, a, a serial entrepreneur. I, I, I can't help it. I, 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 I see an opportunity and I feel almost called to convert it into something. I feel like if I don't convert an opportunity, I failed. I don't know where that came from. And, but I have that. When I think about preparing people, particularly those who are entrusting um, their, me being a part of their guidance for life. And when I think about preparing those people, I, um, it, it is not a command to jump ship. I love what you, what, what you said, I love what everyone said, but when you talked about what are you doing while you're waiting and preparing, and, and you're right, the opportunities are, are going to be fewer, and so survival of the fittest, the excellent will prevail. Um, but I'm also wondering if you're not, if, it, if, if this was not about a calling per se, or maybe it was a calling for a season, my, I want to strike a conversation around innovation and, and maybe rethinking um, how I invest my time and what I pursue. You know, when the pandemic happened, um, 
it forced a lot of innovation, like a lot of things that were small became big, new things came, the world changed. And some economists and some people who really study you know, how societies rise and fall would argue that the greatest ideas, the greatest innovations come out of great adversity. And I, I am wondering if in this shaking, because this is a shaking, without a shadow of a doubt, God is shaking. When you think about when an earthquake comes and it shakes the land, that land is never the same again. It doesn't shake and then go back to what it was. You, you have cracks because there has been a permanent separation, a permanent crack. Um, can you all speak to the, I, I was going to call it feasibility, but we're all faith people, but, but what does innovation look like now? Um, should those who don't necessarily feel called to act, I mean, it's, they're good at it, they're gifted at it, but, but can we talk about, you know, other things, um, other opportunities? What could, what, you know, because you know, sometimes we, we talk about other people putting ourselves in a box, but sometimes we put ourselves in a box. But, uh, but I'd like to maybe talk just for a minute and then we're going to go back very spiritual to close it out. But, but I want to talk about um, not limiting yourself. Uh, in this downtown, downtime, you know, learning something new, uh, trying something new. Um, I, I just want to, I, I, I don't know if I'm asking this right, but I, but I want to I wanna talk about that. I, I'm passionate about that. I think that instead of sitting around waiting for the circumstances to change, um, what does innovation and entrepreneurship and, and uh, the pioneering spirit look like in times like this? <laughs> um, I want to start first with Miriam Webster's definition of audition. Hmm. Audition, according to Webster's dictionary, is the art of listening. Hmm. That's what the literal meaning is. So I think it's very important that as artists, we are listening. To your point, Pastor Torrey, are you hearing, are you attuning yourself to be in alignment, as you said as well, as you said, are you tuning yourself, your ears, your ear gates, are you listening for God's voice? It's not necessarily about completely redefining who you are, who you've been. I mean, I've, I looked at my SAG card today, it said 1989. <laughs> my after card was 1986 so I don't it's not that I am not an actor but to your point in the pandemic I directed for the first time mm. I wrote a script with my best friend who's over there mm. for the first time and it was because I was listening to God telling me mm. to shift I was listening for God telling me to leap. I was listening for God telling me. In the same way that he told me acting was calling me, it was, this, it was the same thing. It was like, no, no, no. And the other thing, because it's not always about entrepreneurship and gaining money, but one of the things that happened during the pandemic is my son's school closed. It was July of 2020. And I wasn't working, and two weeks before, I was having a crisis, right? How are we gonna go back to work? Six feet doesn't work for actors. Like, you know, I was in this panic. And I got an email in July saying, five weeks before school was supposed to go back, that the school was closing their doors permanently. My son had been going to this very small Christian school since he was two. I started making phone calls, Googling Christian schools nearby. <laughs> COVID protocols, <laughs> like, you know, all the things. And the Holy Spirit said, empty your guest house. Mm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what? Empty your guest house. And I said, you mean the guest house is so cute that's decorated for guests? And the Lord was like, yeah, the one that nobody's coming to because there's a global pandemic and everybody's in lockdown? Yeah, that one. So that afternoon, I called my son's best friend's mom, and that afternoon, a little later, there were three mothers in my living room. And five weeks later, my guest house was empty. We hired a teacher that had just lost her job 
unexpectedly from the school my son was attending. And 13 of my son, my son, when COVID happened, there were 13 in his second grade class, it was a very small little school. Nine of them came to my guest house. And the Holy Spirit told me, call it Risen Village. Spell it incorrectly, R-I-S-O-N, as in the Son of God who rose. The Holy Spirit also told me three years. In May, we just finished. Three years later, the school that closed, the founders, show up at my house because they're starting a new school, and I'm donating all the classroom stuff back to them. So I heard the Holy Spirit say three years. My point in saying that is that it wasn't just me. It was a group of believers, because this is a Christian school. So for three years, to your point about work, somebody had to be there to let the teacher take an hour lunch break. And every day for three years, there was a parent there. Every week, twice a week, there was a dad there doing PE. So the point is, is that what we can do when we collaborate, what we can do when we work together, what we can do. And the crazy thing is, <laughs> I almost forgot about this, but the crazy thing is, is that in the midst of all of this, right, I get a check from residuals. I go to my mailbox, I open it up, I'm opening a bunch of checks, because thankfully I'm a part of a lot of, before streaming, products and productions that I still get residuals from, and it helps me in valley seasons. I open an envelope and there is the biggest check I have ever seen in my life in it. <laughs> At one time, and, the re and, and it was a lawsuit that SAG filed on my behalf and some other actors that they won, that I had no idea that they filed. <laughs> so, while you are doing your father's business. Hey. While you are working with your community to take care of your father's children. While you are assembling to pray and give glory to God, calling yourselves a risen village. The father will provide. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And if he parted the Red Sea, you think he cares about a strike? He don't care about the strike. When I was driving over here, the Holy Spirit said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. So you know, when Pastor Ture said it, I was like, ooh, <laughs> okay, Jesus, right? But none of us are righteous, let's be clear. Our righteousness is in Christ. So if we're not going to be forsaken, we have to pursue Christ. The way we pursue the bag, the way we pursue the man, the woman, the way we pursue the body, the way we pursue all of the things. We have to pursue Christ first and foremost. And if you're about your father's business, you will be all right. And you will, better, you will be better than all right because then you will have a testimony to inspire and encourage those around you. That's the reason I'm here. I'm not here because I'm special. I'm not here because I'm special. Y'all, let me. I am not here because I am special. The thing that I can tell you that I am grateful for is that I can hear the Holy Spirit louder and clearer in my pursuit of righteousness. I hear it clearer and I move quicker. That's it. That's it. Okay? Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. 
She just said so much. I just, I, I just, she, she started by talking about audition, and I get it now, odd, odd, you know, that has to do with hearing. I never looked at it that way. And in the silence, her ear got better. The environment created a tuning, that's what's happening, somebody, your, your ear is getting, because sometimes when it's noisy and busy and, you know, and you think it's blessed, but it's busy. And you can't hear. She heard, it started reminding me about the, um, when the brook dried up, when Elijah and the brook dried up. And so it looked like nothing. And the brook has dried up in this town. The brook has dried up. But there was prophesied provision. There was prophesied provision. So there was provision in the prophetic stream. So right now, I feel the Holy Ghost in this. So right now, there is a prophetic stream over all of us right now. What I mean by a prophetic stream? I'm talking about the knowledge of God, the truth of God, that which has been spoken before the foundation of the earth. That's a stream over you. It's a prophetic stream over you. It's happening over you right now, over your circumstance. You feel lost, but in the prophetic, you're not. And so, and so you have to tap into it. And when you tap into it, the instructions, I'm just saying what you said, but just, but I don't want it to get, look at you said so much. So you have to, you have to tap into the prophetic word that's over your life right now. There's a prophetic word over your life yeah. that you have to audition, that you have to attune your ear to hear. And I hear the Lord saying, and everything you need is there. Yeah. Everything you need is there. That's powerful. We, we're going to make sure you, we're going to play that part that you said again, over and over again, hear it over and over again, because the provision, the provision is in the prophetic. The provision is in the stream. I, I'm sorry. I just, you're not just going to sit down and we move past that like that. That's not going to, no, no. That was life changing. Yeah. I thought we were talking about innovation and we sure were. Um, whatever's on your heart, Christopher, I do want us to get to hope and the opportunity opportunity to impart hope what if this whole thing was and it's a shaking so foundations are being shaken what if this whole thing was a tee up for the gospel of hope what if that's what this whole thing at the end of the day because we're looking at money drying up and I, whatever whatever and we'll, we'll, we'll help fix that but 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 what is God doing in it and I wonder if this is and I feel this welling up. I wonder if this is the finest hour for the church in Hollywood. It could be. And, and not just for the church in Hollywood, but the church through Hollywood. I wonder if this is our moment. And, 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 and to squander or to improperly steward this moment would be to be consumed with lack, with the notion of lack, and, and, and miss the kingdom imperative in this moment. What, what do you think about that or whatever well, you want to say? Listening to what Essence said, what stood out to me was a life of service because mm. that's essentially what she did was serve others. And, you know, in this moment, when people talk about innovation. Some of the greatest innovators that I've ever heard of sat back and looked at their industry, whether it's entertainment, tech, or whatever, and found the void. Yeah. What's missing? What are my other friends and family and people in this industry saying that they do not have, that they wish worked better? And then when you find that void and you push towards that, generally you end up serving mm. because whatever it is that you create ends up helping others get back time. It helps others do things more efficiently. And so, you know, when Devon was speaking about the idea that right now 
Don't sit on your laurels. Don't just sit on the sofa, figure out something. And it may be working on a script. It may be working on music, or it may be figuring out a way that you can streamline, cut down things, make things more efficient, and in that you will serve others. And we all know in service, God definitely blesses. Yes. And to me, when I think about hope in this moment where everyone is kind of in despair and going, you know, things aren't going to change or things aren't going to get better. The thing that I think about is whatever you're going through right now, is this really real? Do you really have to be in this moment? Like I wrote in one of the projects I wrote, there's a theme in there that says, do not accept the illusion of your reality. Mm. Where you are right now is only real if you accept it. Wow. Or you can make a change and this moment, whether I'm broke or whatever the situation is, is just an illusion. Mm. And you will then move into your real reality. So, wow. you know, wow. and, and when, you know, you spoke about when the Bible says that faith without works is dead, you know, God says it's impossible to please him without faith. So if faith without works is dead, that means faith is an action word. You can't just believe and hope. You have to do an action. So perhaps there's a job that you want or you need. You could sit there and fill out resumes and just send them off and wait for someone to call. Or you can listen to the Holy Spirit who said, hey, take that bus down to such and such a place. And you're on that bus, like, why am I on this bus? <laughs> and then you're on the bus and perhaps there's an old lady who is having trouble getting off the bus. You help her off the bus to meet her grandson only to discover that he's the hiring manager at the place that you sent the resume to. And in that, what were you doing? You were serving someone else and God, you know, will bless that. So for me, like I said, I just sit back and go, find the void, see how you can innovate off of that, give people back time, serve others, you know, or as someone once, you know, said in, in a book that if you want to be a king, you have to carry a crown. So you have to serve something or someone in order to get to that particular place. Huge. Huge. Like, what happened, man? I thought we were brothers. You put me behind these two? Lord have mercy. Man, what could I ever say, you know? Uh, there were just a couple thoughts that are not connected. Yeah. And so I'm just going to let y'all know. I just had a couple thoughts. They ain't connected. Okay, so we'll just go through them. One, isn't it powerful what Essence just ministered? Would you just give it up for her, please? <laughs> powerful. Powerful. And, 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 and I hope you're cool. I say this because I won't get too detailed, but, like, you all see her talent, her gift, her, her essence, but you don't know the pain she oh had to God. go through yeah, to yeah. sit here. Yeah. So, so often we look That's at the true. promise, we look at the stage, Lord but God. to be on this stage, yeah. and I'm not just talking about the stage in this event, I'm talking about the stage of being in front of people and taking on characters and, and being something that people want you to be that maybe you're not exactly. The pain yeah. to be an artist is the pain that produces the art. So I want you to applaud that she's been able to get through it, to be here, to offer to you and to me and to those watching something of value. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Oh, so that the pain, and, and I just touch on that. Everyone here is going through some pain. The, the pain is, is a purifier for your purpose. So as difficult as it is, like, you know, I, trust me, I, the moment something uncomfortable happens, I'm the number one, like, I, what's going on? Well, who do I got to talk to? What do I got to do to not be this uncomfortable or be in pain? But the pain is what produces the innovation. Right, so uh, let's talk about innovation for a minute and then I got something for everyone here. So like, I look at my life and my career and I say, okay, the, the things that have blocked innovation 
are being so attached to an, a previous understanding of myself that I don't allow God to do a new thing. Right? So, so I'll give an example. So most of you who know me, you know that I'm, 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 I'm a preacher, you know, I'm an author, I'm a producer. And earlier this year, I had the first opportunity to act, right? Amen. Amen. Which is great. Thank you. Jesus revolution. But like, but in terms of innovating, right? Innovating. I have to either be an innovator, right? And sometimes we're looking at ideas. We are the idea that God is trying to innovate every single day something new and different so for me when it came to the movie uh, my buddies who produced the film and directed the movie they said hey do you want to be in this film you know we have we have a role that we think you'd be perfect for my my almost immediate reaction was to speak against the opportunity to innovate because i didn't have the vision for myself that they had so my first thing i was about to say well i'm not an actor and before i could say it the holy spirit said shut up <laughs> why would you speak against something that I'm speaking for? Well, I've never done it. That's innovation. I've never done it. I'm scared. I was terrified. But I'm like, okay, God, if you've given me the opportunity, let me prepare for it. Let me get with acting coaches. Let me, you know, learn my lines. Let me work on my character bio. Let me take on the work of, of an actor to do it. Now, here's what was amazing talking about innovation and that God wants to innovate all of us as long as we don't get so attached to who we were yesterday, right? So I wrote, my, my acting coach said, you gotta write your character bio. Now, my thing was like, well, I just wanna get on there and just, you know, just wanna act. Uh-huh. <laughs> Do your homework. So I wrote the character bio, and, and this is just me coming up with what I believe the character has gone through to get to this moment in these scenes. So I learned my lines, I did my character bio, I'm there on set waiting to, you know, do my lines. And the Holy Spirit said, look at the sides. For those of you that don't know, you know, Hollywood, like sides are the script pages. And when you go show up to act, they put the script pages that you're gonna shoot for the day in your trailer. Look at the sides. I look at the sides. The sides are completely rewritten from what I had studied. But what's in the size? Now, mind you, I had no conversation with the writer and director about what my character bio was. What was in the sides was the majority of what I wrote my character had gone through. <laughs> so I was already ready. You see? And, and here's the other part of innovation. You can't be afraid to look like a fool. No, I'm serious because we, we have so much vanity. Well, what are people going to say? I'm like, listen, people could go to this movie and say, oh, your wig was this, whatever. I don't care. I had enough, I had enough faith to do it. I did it. I'd rather be on the other side of it and say I did it versus like, oh, I'm afraid of what y'all going to say, so I'm not going to do it. That when I... <laughs> but when it comes to innovation, my point is, in order for me to innovate the idea of myself, I had to be open to step into the unknown, to do something uncomfortable that the whole world, from now until Jesus comes, people can watch that movie and say, oh man, he's bad or he's good, whatever. But at the end of the day, if we're so concerned about how we look, if we're so concerned about what we will say, we will never innovate. We are the innovation that God wants us to bring to this, in this business. We're the innovation. We're the innovation in not allowing who you think you are to prevent what God wants you to be. I, can't, I stand on this stage saying, people, say, you know, I was in a couple meetings earlier this week. Well, what's, what's your next, you know, five years? Like, I don't know. I don't know what God is doing. I'm just like, Lord, today, just use me however you want me to be used. Now, here's the other thing. Last thing I'm going to say, I told you there were three different points that are not connected. The last thing is this. You know, I, I sit here and I look at all of you who are amazing and talented. And the thing that blows my mind is, why aren't there more productions coming out of this church? There are directors, writers, producers, actors, makeup artists here. Why are you not getting together with your fellow brothers and sisters to create content that comes out of this house? Why wait on Netflix and 
Amazon to give you the permission to do what you can do right now. And you have line producers here. You, I'm telling you, all the resources you need to shoot your music video, your short film, your, 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 your TV show, you can do it right here. But so often we're looking at Hollywood instead of looking at our neighbor. And if God brought you to one church, if God brought you here, he's not just bringing you here to get him. He wants you to create something. Right? And he wants to use the resources in this house. What if one church is the answer when the strike is over? That out of this house, hit shows, hit movies, hit music, hit albums. Come on. Come on. What if one church, the industry says, what's going on in this church? There's so much content that's coming out. The best actors are coming from this church. The best producers are producing from the best writers. What is going on on La Brea? What's happening in this building? The people of God started working with the people of God. The innovation started working with the innovation. That's what happens. That's how we get through this. Because we start working with each other. Don't wait for Hollywood to give you the yes. Get a yes from yourselves right now. Exchange numbers. Let's start a small group where we talk about we're going to shoot some things. We're going to start creating some things. Come on, somebody. Let's start using the resources in this house to innovate in a way that will change this business. Uh, I don't want to miss this. Everybody stand up real quick. Get in a posture of receiving. This is, this is, I'm, I'm blown away. I'm blown away at what has come through this, this stage, through these vessels. And I truly believe, and I'm going to give them a chance to leave you with something in their own way. But I believe that, that everything that you need to know, the seed of it came out of their mouths tonight. Amen. I'm telling you, I, I, I know it when I hear it. That everything that you need to know and understand for this season came out of their mouths. The seed of it. And you have to water it. And you water it by stepping into it. Amen. You heard something. And if it was coming at you too fast to take notes, I get it. I'm going to make certain that this, you'll have access to it and all the mediums that we have to get content to you. Yeah. But you got it. You don't need nothing else. You got it. Some of it was in seed form. Some of it was a straight out tree. You got a tree tonight. Walk out of here with a tree. But at minimum, it was in seed form. I just want, and it can be prophecy. I still want to pull my spiritual daughter up here on the stage, but I'm trying to let her be pregnant and <laughs> do her stuff. But I just want you to, if there was just one phrase, one sentence, one thought, one idea, this is everything that you said, it is Devon. This is the children of Issachar, the sons of Issachar understood times and seasons and what Israel ought to do. So they, they understood the times, they understood the season, but they tapped into the prophetic stream. And th there was a lot about, all of you talked about collaboration. Yeah. All of you, literally. Collaboration and innovation and serving. And that is the instruction. There are a lot of micro instructions, that's all wonderful, and take what's yours. But the macro instruction that's across the board is to come together with, with your brother and your sister and the Lord, like-minded people who are going to listen to God and do something and to serve. That's the word. But I want you just in your own way, if there was something, this is, this is, this is, these are the ones that God is going to use. These are the ones that God is going to use. And I just want you to, whatever God puts on your heart, you're part of, this is what you want them to carry back into their world. What is it? 
Isolation, isolation breeds indignation. Isolation is not collaborative. Isolation is dangerous. The, the Lord knows that we need each other. Two by two is how he sent them out. Yes. And sometimes you're standing somewhere because someone believed in you greater than you could see or imagine for yourself. Yes. My best friend is here. The minute I told her I was coming to do this, the first thing she said was, can I come with you? Yeah. Mm. Amen. When I was backstage, she was immediately on the throne praying for me. We have to do that for one another. Iron sharpens iron. Please do not let the enemy whisper that you don't need anything or anyone. Don't let pride be the thing that destroys you. It's so important. It's so important. Please, this is not an easy season. I don't want you to think that we don't know that. But it's important that you find a partner in your purpose, in your prayer, and in your promise. Um, what I would say is, if the God that we serve is the creator of everything, and that if just by his voice he spoke things into existence, he took nothing and made it into something, and you're made in his image, do not ever allow someone to be the gatekeeper of your creativity and innovation. Do not let them speak against what you can do because the God who we serve made nothing into something and you can do the same. Wow, again, here we are. <laughs> here we are, here we are, you know. Um, what I would like to leave you with is that all things are possible to those who believe. This business, in terms of entertainment, is a business built on imagination. Think about that. The stories, you know, that come forth from this business, whether on the small screen or the big screen, come from imagination. Someone had to believe in something that they could only see in their mind and did everything that they could to get that out into reality. I want you in this season, as difficult as it may be, to not leave, lose your belief in who you are, in who he is, and what he's called you to do. Please remember this. You're going to remember this night. And I believe, PT, thank you for putting this on. Please give it up for Pastor Teray. You can do better than that. Amen. Because I believe that tonight will be a marker literally where things shifted in the lives of those that are watching on live screen those that are here so if you're here all things are possible to those that believe the one thing the enemy is always trying to do is attack our belief what did he say to eve you will not surely die seed of doubt don't let the headlines plant seeds of doubt where god wants you to harvest a crop of faith amen all things are possible to those who believe. I was going to say, can we give it up to our panelists? Can we give it up to our prophets for tonight? Come on, somebody. Wow. Mind blown. 
mind blown. I'd be remiss if, if I didn't offer an invitation to anyone who might be here and or watching via live stream or and you just it's just time to say yes to God. Or maybe yes to God in a deeper way. In a deeper way. These are deep times. I believe these are the times where you are gonna see miracles. These are the times where where you are gonna yeah, well, God is going to send provision through ravens, and I, I, I really believe that, like, that scenario that Christopher described where he's on, the, God told him to get on the bus, and he's on the bus and sees the lady, and I believe that we're, we're in that time because it's a time of stripping where God just begins to strip away things that not only do you not need but things that keep you from that type of intimacy that produces that type of miraculous journey somebody's getting ready to go on an incredible journey an incredible journey with god but i do want to extend this invitation you don't have to come up that doesn't you don't have to do that if you don't want to but i but i do want to pray for you if god is is drawing you deeper you feel that drawing you beyond acute, trivial, distant relationship with the Lord, but to a real surrendered life. In fact, I, I will ask you to come up. If that's you, I want you to just come and meet us here. We're, meet us here. He's drawing you. You're chosen. You're chosen. He's drawing you. The Lord is drawing you. He's 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 drawing you. There's so many people. There are a lot of people that you admire. Mm. There are a lot of people that you admire that went to the levels that they went to because they had a real relationship with God. A lot of people. And you wouldn't even know, but you admire them. But behind what you see is a vibrant prayer life. A vibrant prayer life. A real relationship with God. I'm not even going to name names. Yes. But I'm talking about people at the top of their crap because God could trust them. And they're gatekeepers and they're moving things. And they move in silence. They don't say much. Every once in a while, you catch them and it'll, it'll come out. But God has planted them strategically in places. And I know for a fact, I've sat with them. I know for a fact it's because of what they were doing in secret. Their secret relationship with God. He says if you do this in secret, in authenticity, just me and you, nobody's watching. This is just me and you in relationship. I will reward you openly. God is calling. Deep is calling the deep. And he's saying, come unto me, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you. He said, and learn of me, intimacy. He says, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. He's drawing. If you're watching via live stream, and Jesus specifically is drawing you, it's simple. All you have to do is just say yes. Just say yes. Just say yes. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, <laughs> I will come in. Open the door. I will come in. Jesus says, I will come in. Just, just, just open the door. All you got to do is open the door. You don't have to force me in. Just open the door. Just say yes. I'm knocking on the door of your heart. Only God can do that. Only he knows where to touch you. So anyone hear my voice and opens the door? He says, I will come in and sup with you, have an intimate exchange with you and you with me. I, I won't be a distant God. Draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. And you'll never regret it. You'll never regret it. You'll never look back. Father, I thank you so much, God, for this night. As Devon said, this is a, a marked night. This is a marked moment, and we are a marked 
people. And there's some in this room and you almost did not make it. Literally, there were forces keeping you from making it. And you came in there with an attitude. <laughs> you laughing because you know what I'm talking about. You came in here with an attitude. And God says, I just needed you here. And your life will never be the same again. God, I thank you for what you're doing. God, the hearts that you have touched and the hearts that you have drawn. And those hearts that have opened up to you and said yes. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would seal this work that you're doing. Lord, I see down the road. I see ministry birth. I see word coming out of people in all kind of form. Spoken, written, produced, sang, all kind of word. Unlimited. I see your sons and daughters tapping into a well. Into a well. He said, I'm going to be a well on the inside of you. You'll never thirst again. This well springing up into everlasting life. You won't miss. You won't be dry. You will find me. When you search me, you'll find direction. You'll find guidance. You'll find provision. And there's a new dimension of joy coming to you. The joy of the Lord. The joy of rooted in your relationship with God is coming to you yes, Lord. now I want you to repeat after me Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. I, thank you I thank you because I feel your love tonight, I feel your love tonight. God, you me. God you see me you know me, you know me. Before, I was put in my womb. before I was put in my mother's womb you knew me you, knew me. you sanctified me you ordained me. God, I thank you for Jesus. Thank you for making him who had no sin, all of mine, all of my weakness, all of my brokenness, all of my fear, all of my confusion, all of my pain all of my brokenness you placed in his body nailed it to the cross and put it to death and when you raised him up free and victorious because i am now in him i'm raised up too seated in heavenly places in christ jesus far above bondage far above brokenness in Christ I'm whole in Christ I'm new in Christ I'm called in Christ I'm victorious in Christ I have a future in Christ I have a covenant in Christ I have his promise in Christ I am prophetic in Christ I have a destiny in Christ I am creative in Christ I bear his image and his likeness and the very gates of hell cannot shall not will not prevail against me I'm on my way up in Jesus name now Holy Spirit fill me to the overflow that I would lack nothing no spiritual resource no spiritual power will be kept from me fill me with the Holy Ghost fill me baptize me with the Holy Ghost and fire change my life free me in every way in Jesus name now put your hands together and just begin to praise God. Put your hands together, open your mouth, and begin to praise God. Declare your newness. Declare your freedom. I feel the Spirit of God. I feel the Spirit 
of the Lord in this house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let the joy of the Lord be yours. I feel God. Come on. Uh uh. Come on. Come on. We're going all the way. We're going all the way. We're going all the way. Like there is no tomorrow. We're going all the way. 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 Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. All the way. 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 Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. All the way. All the way. All the way. All the way. Lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. Rush. Established. 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 Establish, 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 lacking nothing, lacking nothing, lacking nothing, fullness, 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 chosen, 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 a royal priesthood, a holy nation. A peculiar treasure, lacking nothing. Russia, lacking Russia, but lacking nothing, lacking nothing, lacking nothing, lacking nothing. Lack fullness, 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 fullness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fullness, 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 fullness. Stir up the gift. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. Come on. Take him. 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 I will resource you. I will not leave you powerless. Anointed. Authority. Grace. Fullness. Fullness is yours. Fullness is yours. Yep. Come on. Come on. You're going to need some power. 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 Come here. You're going to need some. Yes, Shima. Just receive it. 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 Love. 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 Radical love. Radical love. The Father's love. The Father's love. Amen. Chosen. Accepted. The enemy's a liar. You're not forsaken. You're not forgotten. You're chosen. You're chosen. Chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. You're chosen. I hear the Lord saying, you're mine. You're mine. You're mine. I will never forsake you. I will never fail you. I will never fail you. I will never leave you. I will never leave you. When you walk through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they won't overflow you. And through the fires, and you won't be burned. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will comfort you. I will help you. I got you. I got you. In this life, this is what Jesus said. You'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I got you. I got you. There's not a place your steps will go that have not been ordered. There's not a place you will walk that I'm not with you. I got you. And you take that with you. 
And you take that with you. Yeah. So God bless your people. Seal what has happened tonight. And God wanted me to tell you that you're different. You're different. That he gave you something tonight. He just sprinkled seed all night. All night. So much so that it just, you couldn't deny it. You're like, well, that was coincidence. And then Christopher came right back behind it. Well, that might have been coincidence. Then Devon. And then you thought that since was finished. And boom, she came right back at you again. It's God saying, I got you. I know what you need. And God, I just pray that it would grow up, that it would take root and bear fruit. In Jesus' name. Love you very much. Can we give it up one more time for Essence, Christopher, and Devon? Thank you so much. Thank you, oh God. Thank you. I'm serious. Bless you. God bless you, family. Well, I just believe and know that that word ministered to you as they often always do. Remember to subscribe so that you can continue to experience this rich. We'll send you a reminder. If you want to sow into this ministry, we are reaching people, as you know, all around the world. And we need your help and your support to not just bless people spiritually, but practically in all the ways that we do. The giving instructions are on the screen. Sow into this and may the Lord bless you abundantly in every way. God bless you. We'll see you next week.